And our speaker today is a lifelong Memphian and a graduate of both Memphis University School and Memphis State University. In his extensive experience, he has managed some of this community's greatest assets, including museums, the Park Commission, and that band of ducks in the lobby of the Peabody Hotel. Will you please help give a warm welcome to our Shelby County historian, Mr. Jimmy Ogle. <laughs> Thank you, and thank you, John and Nancy and Katie, for all this help. Uh, I want to thank Memphis Heritage, West Tennessee Historical Society, the Register's Office, and the Memphis Room. Dig Memphis, that's a lot. These images are from there. You saw in yesterday's newspaper where uh, the Commercial Appeal donated all their archives to the University of Memphis Library over there for access as well. Willie's very happy about that. Uh, this, this is since the sesquicentennial, centennial, 1970s and now. I'm gonna call it Tale of Two Cities at the end of it too. And we'll get to that point in a while. But uh, again, this is gonna be a run through this. And we're gonna start the 70s with the 60s. You know how I always kind of back up a little bit when I start things and set the table. And uh, in the 60s here, this will be our population of the uh, city. This is the population, full population of Shelby County. So that's about 100,000 outside of Shelby County. You see the relation there each time in that second set of graphics. As we go through each of these decades to help you read that, I'm not going to hit everything that happened. I'm going to try to hit uh, many things uh, about our city, whether it's historical or about buildings being built or, or, or things that just happened as our city went in different directions in the 1960s. We kind of entered the area being separate but equal, I would like to say. We still hadn't come out of that in the middle of the century. We were going through the public desegregation in the 50s and 60s with the Memphis State 8, the Memphis 13, Memphis Interscholastic Athletic Association 68, theaters being desegregated, parks, lunch counters, department stores. You've seen some of those historical markers I put up about this. 1963, everybody's always concerned about the weather, okay? So we had our all-time low in 1963, folks. How about that? Minus 13. Nobody said global warming then either, or climate change. Uh, and then we had a record, it was a record high snow since 1892 of 14 inches as well. So the cycle of every five or 10 or 15 or 20 years, we get some weather going on. I put downtown erosion because the retail and professional offices moved from downtown. It went from like 60% of the retail in the city were being, things were being purchased in downtown. It went to like, by the end of the 70s, about 5%. It really eroded out because it was post-World War II the automobiles, everybody had, we had two car families, or a lot of them did, the expressways, uh, the shopping centers, the shopping malls, all drew everything out away from downtown and to the east. Couldn't go to the west cause the river and the floodplain. So we had to kind of, we grew lopsided. And downtown became the western uh, outpost geographically and, and population wise of the city. 1966, Bill Street got placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, downtown, not so abandoned, had not been so much abandoned since yellow fever when you get into the 1970s. And we lost three-fourths of our population in one month due to yellow fever in the 1870s. Same type of effect 100 years later. White flight is what I say, and it did happen. You'll see some of the numbers as we go through later on about that term. But in 57, when the Sears at, at uh, Poplar and Perkins got beat, 59, Laurelwood Shopping Center, uh, we moved in 1957 from Colonial to White Oaks, and I think there was three homes in Laurelwood at that time. Uh, think about how packed Laurelwood is now. Uh, Goldsmiths in 60, of course, the mall came later on. 62, St. Jude opened in 1962. Eastgate Shopping Center, 64. Coliseum, Rivermont, downtown. First Tennessee Bank uh, was built downtown in 64, the big tall building you see. That was the first skyscraper built since 1930. 34 years because of the Depression, World War II, and this post-World War II suburbanization. Uh, the Memphis Memorial Stadium was built in 1965. In 1977, it got changed to Liberty Bowl Memorial Stadium. Civic Center Plaza all got built out. 63 was city was federal building. 65 or 66 was City Hall. 69 was the Shelby County building. I think 67 was the state building. All that Civic Center Plaza got built out based on the 1924 Bartholomew Plan. 66 South Lamar, 68 White Station Tower. Uh, 66, City replaces the commission form of government with mayor council. And then of course 68 was a sanitation strike and the big moment right there that concluded the 60s was really the assassination of Dr. King. Uh, 
Memphis was designated a point of origin and entry, becoming international at our airport in 1969. And Memphis State's enrollment reached 20,000 in 1969. It really grew big in the 55 to 70, let's say. Here's St. Jude, the first hospital being built in 1962. The Star is what they called it, I think. Paul Williams was a black architect out of California. There was an exhibit a couple of years ago over at the University of Memphis about his work. That building's no longer there, by the way. Uh, here's Mud Island. Here's the riverfront back in 1967. How about that airport right there? Of course, they don't have a bridge yet. <laughs> Once we built the bridge, you couldn't land airplanes underneath the bridge, okay? Uh, but you can see here's a part of Tom Lee Park right around, the, this about, ended about right here. You see them dredging out all of Mud Island right in here, put it, put it up on the eastern half uh, to get that above the 100-year floodplain. Wolf River had been cut off in 62 and sent straight out up in here because it smelled so bad from the industry in North Memphis. In 1975, it was declared a dead river. And in the 80s is when I believe uh, uh, Wolf River Conservancy formed and look what they've done in the last 30 plus years for the Wolf River. That starts all the way out in Holly Springs, 108 miles that way and drains through. Uh, you can see Riverside Drive here, no pyramid obviously. Uh, partial, uh, well no convention center yet. You have Ellis Auditorium. There's the uh, uh, federal building. Uh, 100 North Main building built in 65 and nothing on Mud Island yet except that airport right there. The old Memphis Shot Club, the boats along there, Memphis Queen Line and all the warehouses in here uh, in South Main. Of course there's April 4, 68. That's probably the most iconic picture of the 1960s. I'll try to pick out one iconic picture for you. That one's it. Time Magazine back in April, sec April 12, 1968 called us a decaying river town. Southern Backwater. They took a picture of Fourth and Vance. Remember that in the magazine? Some guys leaned up against the pole. Well, that pole is still there, and those buildings are still there 50 years later. These were taken last month, not 50 years ago, at that same intersection. Now, fortunately, right across the street, Foot Homes has been torn down, and new, new buildings are going in there. Uh, this is the R.S. Lewis and Sons Funeral Home, which is a very active funeral home right there. Probably this is the, probably the telltale sign. After the King assassination, two weeks later, the sanitation strike gets settled. Open door policy with Mayor Loeb. All these uh, mixed group of ministers here. But he had a loaded shotgun underneath the desk right there. <laughs> Bob Williams took this picture. He's still alive at Kirby Pines, by the way. He intentionally came around and took that angle so he could get the loaded shotgun in the mayor's desk in his office. Believe that. Civil rights, 20th century timeline. You see how we kind of came through it? In the 60s, a lot of things happened. Court cases occurred. Public swimming pools were closed. A normal tree room sit in at the university with the students. Then you had the Black Mondays uh, against the uh, people not shopping in the stores to prove their impact. Memphis State 859, and then Memphis 13 and 61. Don't buy gas where you can't use the restroom. Uh, there's one of those license plates in the shape of Tennessee, is, by the way. There's the bumper sticker saying that right there. Then, of course, the sanitation strike, the marches. If you play precious, I want you to play precious Lord, play it for me, play it real pretty. And those are Dr. King's last words to Ben Branch that day on the balcony. Saxophone player. There's a newspaper headline. In the summer of 68, not much has changed with the downtown. Then we go to the sesquicentennial. There was a commission. There were historical markers made. Uh, a lot of events. I'm hoping sometime this year soon we'll hear about the bicentennial having events in the summertime uh, about Memphis. So let's get into the 70s. So there's your population, uh, 70 to 79. That's in 1970. Uh, probably the same as it was in the 68 slide, I think. Um, but the blue laws were repealed. That allowed shopping on Sundays. Uh, how about in 1970, we had a ceremony allowing women police officers to carry guns. That had to happen sometime, didn't it? 1970. That's only 50 years after they got the right to vote. They're going to let them carry guns. Women police officers. Winfield Dunn, first Memphian to be elected governor since 1909. That was Malcolm Patterson, who the street is named for out here. Uh, Winfield Dunn. Uh, Citizens to Preserve Overton Park versus Volpe, the Secretary of Transportation. We'll come back to that little picture right there in just a minute. Liquor by the Drink got passed. That's when Overton Square started flourishing with Fridays and all that. Clock Tower opened in 72. Kimmins Wilson was on the cover of Time Magazine. 1973, one comma square was built downtown, another tall building. 73, FedEx opens. Imagine no FedEx in Memphis, Tennessee. 
or Federal Express at the time, I'm sorry. Uh, imagine that. The convention center opened. Uh, Court-ordered busing. We'll see about something about that in a minute, another picture. Probably the highest moment in the history of our city with the races being together were in the spring of 1973 in this moment right here. Although we lost the ball game, uh, this young man right here won the hearts and uh, minds and everybody around the country with that big, tall redhead who still talks too much on basketball games right now on, on ESPN. But he's very appreciative of Memphis, Bill Walton is. In fact, he is one of the honored people this year at the Civil Rights game, I believe. But, of course, Larry Finch. And we'll, I'll come back to that in just a minute in more detail. Timpani Condos opened downtown. That was there on Union Avenue. Jack Tucker was building condos when the Peabody was closed, uh, when more people were living in jail in downtown Memphis and residentially. And he called him the Timpani because he was banging the drum for downtown. Jack Tucker, the great architect. <coughs> Peabody sold in 75. Memphis Heritage was founded that year. That's very curious there. The Mid-America Mall opened. Gerald Ford actually dedicated it. Liberty Land opened. 76, Malco was saved for $285,000. The city had turned down $100,000 for the Malco. Didn't want it. Too much upkeep. Somebody else got together and bought it for $285,000. Uh, let's see. Uh, Beale Street was fenced off from 77 to 83. The last movie to show it to Malco was on November the 2nd, 1976. We'll show that in a minute. Curiously, in 1977, during this downtime, Memphis in May got formed and the Center City Commission, you know now as the Downtown Memphis Commission, to start bringing emphasis to downtown, whether it was events or marketing or businesses or facade improvements, anything to help business be recreated in downtown. That same year, the largest fire, the Ray Sharp Lumber Company, over a million feet of lumber burned in 77. Chalkboards got replaced at the Cotton Museum. First candlelight vigil at Graceland, 1978. That's a big moment, isn't it? And then um, I believe in 78 also is when we had the police and fire strikes as well. And then, uh, again, more people living in jail at the end of the, end of the decade than living downtown. So there's the moment. That young man right there in 1969. By the way, what coach signed Larry Finch? Don't say Gene Bartow. It was Mo Iba. Yeah, that was Mo Iba's last year. He signed. And Larry was the first star basketball player. He went against the grain to sign with Memphis State. Memphis State was not actively recruiting star black athletes in Memphis. Bobby Smith went to Tulsa. Yeah, her period was pretty good. Tweedy Jackson was okay, but Larry was the first one. Then Ronnie came right after that, about a month later, Ronnie Robinson. And so Larry really went against the grain of the leaders of the black community. 1973 media guide I have at home was dedicated to Ronnie, and, uh, Ronnie Robinson and Larry Finch's mothers uh, out of Orange Mound there. I thought that was pretty neat. And again, the four-year, the three-year run, freshman didn't get to play at that time, but the three-year run that Finch had and the team and Gene Bartow all the way to that game right there was just brought the city together. I think that's the highest moment we've ever been together race-wise in this city was 1973. I think we've fallen considerably since then, but that was the, the highest peak moment of my life, my life, okay? My opinion, my life, my lecture, I can say that. <laughs> So we started moving further east. If you go to further east out here to Stevenson's Big Star, not Stevenson's Big Star, super low now, isn't it? I'm sorry. These pictures are on the wall in the employee break room. <laughs> and these are aerials. There's Poplar Avenue, and there's the train line coming in. Here's the old Colonial Country Club right here. And then uh, this gets you out to where you have White Station Tower. You don't have Clark Tower yet. I just think these are neat pictures here. This is where uh, Sears is right here. Here's Goldsmith's right here. Jump for Joy. Anybody remember Jump for Joy, the in-ground trampolines? Remember the putt-putt that was there at Perkins? Yeah, in Ottoman Park. All this is Ottoman Park. There's the old Colonial Country Club. That's now Target and uh, super low right in there and, and residential areas. Uh, I-40, the big issue here. March 2nd, 1971, after about 15 years of consternation, the citizens of Preserve Overton Park fought City Hall, Chamber of Commerce, county government, state government, federal government, newspapers, everybody, and on March 2nd, 1971, the Supreme Court of the United States decided in favor of the citizens and the environment against the government for that expressway not going through the middle of a midtown and over the park. Bike gate is there now. I love this cartoon here. This is on the wall at the cottage restaurant. Tree jumps out and hits a car again. <laughs> it did. And there's over the governor there saying, I, it's going through here. So there's the original park plan by George Kessler back in the early 1900s. There's the old bus lane right there. So they're just going to kind of follow that bus lane right there. And this 342-acre park, that's where the zoo would be all in here right now, you see. Uh, and here's the route right here. 
coming right through. Of course, Sam Cooper ends right here at Parkway. And so you see, that's kind of... Co- now, why when they came out of Nashville, like from Jackson, why didn't you just come like this and just be done with it? Just go through the Wolf River Bottoms rather than right through Midtown. It would have solved a lot of junk going on like this, tearing up both sides of the neighborhood. Of course, they rebuilt back in there, but this is, this is right there where uh, 240 goes north-south. And Parkway's right in here. There's that big slide again. I always like showing that slide. There's Larry Finch. I got in the 80s, I got to be with Larry Finch some when I was at the Park Commission. He come out to the playground set as an assistant coach in our summer programs and be with the kids. He was really a great PR guy. Look at those pants. <laughs> and he's got Adidas on though, doesn't he? <laughs> no Nike. Uh, and of course, 73, some people didn't like this court order busing, which I think everybody, everybody thinks that's one of the worst things that ever happened to our whole community. Uh, both black and white kids getting busted out of their neighborhoods, couldn't walk to their neighborhood schools. Let's make those schools better than try to bust people. But, and there's folks burying the bus right there, very symbolically. A lot of schools popped open during that time. The bridge got open in 1973, the Hernando de Soto Bridge. There's the, the, there's the convention center being finished right next to Ellis Auditorium, St. Jude out in here. And there's the bridge to nowhere. <laughs> uh, FedEx. Look at that little old FedEx right there. That young man did pretty good. Federal Express, excuse me. Absolutely positively, right? 32,000 people employed now at Federal Express in Memphis and about 400,000 people worldwide. St. Jude kept on growing. Of course, there's the Gold Dome, the Alsac Pavilion. Danny Thomas is buried there on the grounds. And then here's the big auction right here, 75 Peabody. Courthouse steps, $540,000. Jack Belt said they outbid Prince Mongo for the Peabody Hotel. It would have been Planet Zambodia for real. <laughs> Here's Beale Street. Now, this isn't Silky's. This is, Al- this is Alfred's. This is this block right now that's completely full. But a lot of those buildings, the, the ceilings had fallen down. They saved the facades. That one they saved from the inside. Well, from the outside. And when they built back inside there, they built up. But this is the block right across from Handy Park. In fact, I'll show you a comparison here in a minute. Oop, there's the Peabody. Uh, of course, uh, it was the Sheraton Peabody. They even had a drop ceiling in the lobby there where you couldn't see the, the skylights or anything. Uh, go west, young duck. <laughs> and ducks marched out of there for a while. There was the garage sale to Peabody. Anybody get, go to the garage sale in 1978 to the Peabody Hotel? Lamps or TVs or whatever, you know? And that's where the, the renovations there. Mid-America Mall came in 76. That was going to help bring people downtown. And basically what it did was probably block people from getting downtown up and down the mall. Even service vehicles couldn't get up and down there. We had a, a nice few years of Oktoberfest there on Civic Center Plaza. Then again, there's the Cotton Exchange uh, boards going away. Memphis and May starting up. Not that big at that time. They started out on Beale Street. In fact, the barbecue started in the parking lot of the Orpheum in 1978 with 2017s. Think about that, how it's grown over the years. Here's some of the, the restaurants downtown. Some of y'all might have gone to Blues Alley. Wolfgang's became Butcher Shop. The pier was there for a long time, looking at the river. Of course, the rendezvous. They say in the 1970s, if you were caught downtown, you were either lost or looking for the rendezvous. <laughs> here it is. In 1978, urban renewal. Now look at all this back in here. 11 projects, 562 acres, 3,000 buildings removed. We called it urban removal not urban renewal, and it took a while to start getting some of that back. This is Beale Street. This is where uh, Tin Roof is right here, a former Hard Rock Cafe. This is where Jerry Lee Lewis is, is right here. Coyote Ugly, you know. This is looking east on Beale. And they actually made it turn into Handy Circle there for a while, and then they brought it back. Look at that. This is where FedEx Forum is now. This is where Weston is now. Gibson Guitar right here. Hampton Inn uh, is right here. Uh, and that big parking garage uh, for Peabody Place. This is the Orpheum right here, folks. MLG and W. That parking lot's still there. There's a parking lot. There's Schwab. It's made it through. Same old crummy floor, same old crummy merchandise. If, you, if, if we don't have it, you don't need it. That's what they say. That's right after the riot. <laughs> Oops. Malco, 1976, the last movie to show, House of a Thousand Pleasures. Hello, starring Willie Bearden, right? <laughs> and Bob Acri, right? We've already seen that stat. All right, let's go to the 80s here real quick. First decade of population drop since yellow fever. 
White population dropped 19%. Black population rose 9%, but we dropped down to 610. County's about 200,000 ahead of us now. Uh, 200,000 out there, I mean. Uh, there's another heat wave. Talking about now, here's heat wave. Took 67 lives. Y'all remember that? I was working at the Park Commission. We ran heat relief shelters in our community centers. Had air-conditioned vans picking, picking up senior citizens in homes who some seniors didn't want to leave their home because they knew people would see them leaving. They'd get their house broken into because they weren't there. Or they'd keep the windows down and not get the air in because people would come in the windows. So it was just kind of a bad situation. 15 consecutive days over 100 degrees. Hadn't been like that for a while. Peabody reopened and 201 opened, same year. How about that? Y'all know what 201 is, don't you? Willie, you know what 201 is? Okay. <laughs> Mall of Memphis and Hickory Ridge Mall opened in 81 too. Out there in Parkway Village and on out Hickory Ridge, they opened in 81. We started sprawling out more. Finally, 10 years later, the Transportation Secretary officially scraps the I-40 plan, officially, and starts letting lands being bought and built back into. It took a long time to get those lands back. Uh, 81 was the big year Peabody, 82 Graceland and Mud Island opened, that helped tourism, 83 Bill Street reopens, Waterford Plaza, Firestone, and MPS closed. What's MPS? Memphis Press Cemetery, Halloween in 1983, it closed. Showboat buses began, maybe that was the doom of Memphis right there, was those showboat buses, I don't know, they were pretty ugly. Uh, Orpheum had 14 days of Broadway in 84. Start something great in Memphis. Marshall Murdoch came here from Virginia. Virginia is for lovers, remember that campaign? And he came here, and this is our first fully funded effort for a convention and visitors bureau. 1985, that's how late we were in the game on that. Crown Plaza opened, that's now the Marriott, I believe, or Sheraton, Marriott, Sheraton, Sheraton. Uh, there's those showboat buses. Uh, uh, St. Jude votes to stay in Memphis. St. Jude almost went to, to St. Louis in 1986. That was a big effort by our politicians and business community to keep St. Jude here. Think if, if we didn't have FedEx or St. Jude in Memphis, folks. Uh, a bridge of lights that year. That's when we lit the bridge in 1986. 200 sodium vapor lights. Africa in April started at Confederate Park. Uh, Wonders, Ramsey's exhibition. Almost three quarters of a million people came to that, and that's how Wonders got kicked off. The Memphis Bell was uh, dedicated to there. The panda was at the zoo. And the Willis Bridge opened to Mud Island. Uh, that really opened up Mud Island. And then the river was on an all time low at minus 10.7 in 88. Oak Court Mall, Lorraine Motel finally closes. Three years later, the Civil Rights Museum was opened. 1988, some operators started beginning answering 9-11 calls. That had to happen sometime. 1988, folks. Timely Park Dyke started being built. Harbor Town was begun. And then Bass PLC of London, not Bass Pro, buys Holiday Inn. Of course, they leave Lamar Avenue out there and leave a big vacuum out there. I say the number one event of the 1980s was the 1981, when the Peabody reopened. That was the catalyst event for the rebirth of downtown Memphis. The Belts had spent $25 million in five years restoring that old hotel against the odds and spent a lot of million dollars ever since then, too, <laughs> you know, uh, making it the number one hotel in the area. There's Bill Street again, just amazing. Here's a compared to those of those buildings today. That's what they were in 1981. There's that Peabody. Some of Mud Island's under construction here. Of course, the center of downtown was at the Civic Center Plaza at the time. Now the center of downtown's moved down to the Peabody, Beale Street, and South Main, way down in here. This is no longer the center of town. That's kind of empty town after 5 o'clock at night because all those government people are gone, or you got either lawyers or criminals in jail. <laughs> Not the best place to be in downtown Memphis at nighttime. Mud Island opened 1982. Grayson, 82, like I said. Four mayors in 1982 in, in one year. Remember, we had four mayors in one day in 1916, Crump and all them. This is why Chandler res resigned, the uh, chairman of the city council. J.O. Patterson became the next mayor for 20 days, then the CAO. Wallace Madewell, in his 20, in his 20 days, every, every, I was at the park commission. Every one of them got new stationery for their 20 days, and we had to change everything. <laughs> it was amazing. For 20 days, guys, come on. And he's the one that signed a 53-year lease with, with Performa for Bill Street in his 20 days. That's a pretty big contract, you know. And, of course, Dick Hackett elected at age 33. Somebody made a statement about Tammy Sawyer's 36. He's too young. Uh-uh, Dick Hackett was 33, and he, he was out when he was 42, <laughs> you know. Uh, very young man, city court clerk, uh, or city clerk. Uh, hair was at Bill that same year, too. So he go from all this hair right here. That's some pretty good sets of hair, don't you think? <laughs> 
to hear live on stage in 1982 at the Orpheum. I don't know if they had nudity or not, but uh, you can still see there in 82, you still had a liquor store right next to it there. Of course, Beale Street opened in 83. Took a while, took about eight years to get there. Uh, that's because when B.B. King's opened in 91. Here's the Orpheum sign being redone, 83. Well, Broadway meets Beale. Now, here's a promotional thing here. Carl and Jean Bonish parachute from the top of the 100 North Main Club to kick off the Cotton Carnival Parade. Has anybody ever seen that? Was anybody there? I never heard of that until I started looking at this decade. And I was around at that time. Well, five weeks later, Carl would die when he jumped. He missed a jump in Norway. So don't jump off the 100 North Main building, okay? Later on, you might not make it. Anybody ever been up to the 100 North Main, top of the 100 Club? Wasn't that cool? Hopefully I'll get that reopened again. 1986, Old Man River gets lit. Pat Tigert got 2,000 people on the Mud Island. They raised, they got them lit. <laughs> raised about half a million dollars. And you see how the glare is on the river right here. You got a green light in the center of the span, about like that, then a red light here on the pier. And the nighttime mariners shoot for the green light to go through. Well, this glare put a big glare right there. So they said, you got to turn those lights off. We can't see our, it's a hazard to navigation. So what they did, they put a sensor on the bridge and the towboat pilots can hit it with their floodlight and turn the lights off like that in a snap. The boat will clear through, the lights will twinkle on in about 15 minutes and everybody's happy. And that's how we do it on the river in downtown. Get things done. There's the Panda, the Memphis Bell, Ramsey's. That was a great summer of tourism in 87, one of our best summers ever. That's what really helped spring because in 1984, the zoo was close to almost closing, really. It was in that bad of shape because the expressway had stymied any capital improvement growth for 20 years. Mr. Plow wanted to move it out to Chevy Farms anyway. That didn't help any. He passed away in 84. Uh, but it finally started with the panda, with the koala in 84, I believe, the panda in 87. Started getting some international attention to the zoo, and it's grown to be one of the top five zoos in the country now. But here's the Ramsey's a great statue. The only time a this is a cast mold, really, of the broken down Ramsey statue that is a part of the deal to have Ramsey's. We put that statue back together. That's the only time that's ever happened in the history of the Egyptian antiquities of the organization. So we give Dick, Dick Hackett credit for that. Oops. Let's go to the 1990s real quick. Goldsmiths downtown closes. How many have been in Goldsmiths downtown? Boy, those little rings on the elevator, on the escalator, ding, ding, ding. I don't know what those things meant. Does anybody know what those little bells ringing meant? Had a code? Yeah, up, the upper echelon employees had their own code. Were you one of those? No, sir, my dad was. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Autograph session over here later on, folks. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, first home purchased on Mud Island, 1990. Now there's 7,000 people living out there. It's packed. Give me Memphis was the new slogan after Marshall Murdoch left. Pyramid opened 91, Civil Rights Museum opened 91, and B.B. King's opened on Beale Street. That's what got Beale Street over the hump. There was nothing up on that second street end of, of Beale Street at the time, not even Blue City Cafe. In fact, 93 is when Dove's Eat Place opened there before it became Blue City Cafe. It basically ended right at Schwab's. Uh, Harrington elected mayor by 144 votes. Now, I've seen that be 172, 146, 144. I still think they're counting votes on that election. <laughs> But that was a, over 250,000 votes cast. If you remember that night, many of y'all do, and Harold Ford came down and got involved, and, and, and Paul Gurley and Dick Hackett did the right thing in saying we lost uh, and didn't fight it in court or anything, let the city transition during that time. Danny Thomas died that year. Nothing to do with Harrington getting elected, okay? Uh, but he's buried there at Alsac Pavilion. South Bluffs opened in 92. I'll show you a picture of that. Uh, Main Street trolley begins in 93. Timely Park expansion is completed from eight acres now. It's 30 acres, and we're fighting over it again. Uh, AutoZone headquarters comes downtown. That was a big deal right there. Uh, they were founded in 1979 as Auto Shack and got sued by Radio Shack. Now there's 6,000 AutoZones and no Radio Shacks. <laughs> ha! Sleeping at Court Square opens. That seems like a big deal. People thought you can't have that suburban motel in downtown Memphis. Yep, they made them change the facade and everything and dress it up. Now that same company has three hotels on that one block, about 600 rooms. I think they've done their share for downtown Memphis and their block right there, Greg Averbush. I took him and, oh uh, gosh, Noah and Serato and Sylvia in 95. I took them on a little riverboat ride on a dinner cruise one night. We just kind of held their hand and said, you're going to make it through. It's going to be all right, you know, and they did, and we're certainly glad they did. 
Uh, the Tennessee Welcome Center opens. That's been a great asset down there. Uh, Peter Daugherty awarded Nobel Prize for Medicine out of St. Jude. The Riverfront Trotty Loop opens. Wonders comes back with the Titanic. This was the North American premiere of all the objects from the debris field of the Titanic. Uh, Milvina Dean was here. She was 10 weeks old, and she was handed over on that Titanic in a, in a, in a pillowcase to a lifeboat. She's here 85 years later signing autographs, of one of the three remaining survivors. We recreated the last menu of the Titanic uh, at Chez Philippe a couple of years ago, the 100th anniversary of the Titanic sinking. Why not? Do the last, it was a nine-course French dinner, no duck on it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I had to talk about that in the comparison to the Sultana and the largest maritime disaster just right outside our front doorstep. And that year, uh, National Geographic, another, com well, uh, the Astoria Fur Company, uh, Tom Lee Park was named Astor Park for the Astoria Fur Company, and John Jacob Abster went down on the Titanic. But uh, National Geographic that year had an article about the Titanic, like they do all the pictures and everything, and the author was from Memphis, Tennessee, Hampton Sides, who I used to carpool, <laughs> my little brother. Yeah, out there, Poplar and Cherry. Uh, St. Joseph closes downtown. Uh, St. Jude takes over that property, Central Station opens, and then the 1.1 mile River Bluff walk open. We fought the citizens, uh, Pat Merrill and some other folks fought to get easement just like Paul Coppock had done in the 1960s around Hotel Rivermont uh, there. There's a big headline I think for the 90s was Harrington wins. Uh, first elected black mayor in Memphis. Uh, J.O. Patterson was appointed or by succession for 20 days. So this is the first election. And there till 2009. There's B.B. King. Gosh, what a great ambassador he was all those years. He and Rufus Thomas together, let's say. Civil Rights Museum kind of opened quietly uh, in 91, 23 years after the King assassination. And of course, the first two questions they get was where the shots fired from and what's happened in 23 years. And that's what they addressed in 2002 when they expanded. Pyramid opened in 91, bridge over to Manila in 87. Commercial Pill says, Hackett builds bridge to nowhere. Well, it was nowhere, wasn't it? Now there's 7,000 people living out there. There's the trolley. There's AutoZone headquarters. Riverboats, they kept on building riverboats. Uh, did over 1,000 cruises that year. Get the 2,000, 646, the 927. The, there's more, more and more growing out that way. AutoZone Park opens in 2000. Oh, millennia. everybody remember Y2K? Yeah. Nothing happened, did it? I had to get B.B. King from his place down to Handy Park. He opened up 2000 from Handy Park. I thought that was really cool. The crossroads of America's music. That was my task. Rock and Soul opens. The census shows 8,900 people living in the downtown census tract in, in 2000. 8,900. Remember that. Peabody Place Mall opens 81. Let's just kind of skip through here real quick. Grizzlies come in 01. We finally got an NBA team. Lewis, Lewis Tyson is on. Remember the Lewis Tyson fight? Worldwide uh, World Boxing Championship. Ground baking for FedEx Forum. Cannon Center opens. Then that windstorm comes through. And don't say those two words together in the same sentence or you'll be expelled from here, okay? <laughs> don't. Trolley extended to the medical center. Uh, FedEx Forum opens in 04. Uh, 71 homes sold in three hours on Mud Island in 05. How about that? It's catching on. Tower Record closes by 06, just five years later. The last event in the pyramid was Bob Seger on February 3rd. We, got a, we made a t-shirt that has the names of all the people who performed in the pyramid on it. Still got a couple of those somewhere. Long sleeve black t-shirt, Erickson Group did. The last movie of Movie Coast. You can see this thing going down. Peabody Place did not work, did it? Peabody Place Retail and Entertainment Center. Uh, you get to 09 here, 2009. Mayor Willie Hareton leaves office. And then uh, the Dalai Lama visits, and our mayor pro tem, Myron Lowry, makes national news with his fist bump greeting. Didn't Steve Cohen do a head bump with him in Congress or something like that? <laughs> Didn't he? I think he did, yeah. Man, I was watching the TV this morning, I turned on, and the Big Star movie was on. You've seen the oh, guy, and Steve Cohen read about Alex Chilton dying when he read that from 2010 from the congressional floor. It really tugs at you. Watch that special on stars about Big Star. Uh, there's AutoZone Park. That was a huge moment getting uh, that finest minor league ballpark in the country. And now 901 FC soccer's playing in there, and they're going to have a great summer in AutoZone Park. It's going to be a busy time in downtown Memphis. There's our three mayors in one year this time. Four mayors in one year before, now three. <laughs> you know, we're, we're kind of spreading it out a little bit more. Um, 
Bill Street starts happening. Bill Street's now the largest revenue grossing tourist attraction in the state of Tennessee. FedEx Forum opens, uh, one of the finest arenas. I got to be flown around the country doing the clock and NBA games, and I got to see San Antonio and Indianapolis, who our building was built after, and it's really nice. We got a good facility there. Go to 2010 real quick, and you see the Memphis is flat there at 650,000. The county's at 936, about 280,000 more. University of Memphis Law School comes downtown. Now you got another 10,000 people living in downtown out in 10 years. It's starting to pick up. Pinnacle Airlines announces a move into the 12 floors in 2010, and about six years later they leave. <laughs> you know, uh, the river gets to an all-time high, second all-time high. I'm sorry, in 2011, uh, construction begins on the pyramid. That was a pretty big deal to take that empty building of 1.5 million cubic feet and make something out of it. Their first year, they're open. They did three million visitors, fixed 56 million dollars in sales, and they sold 12 tons of fudge. I, I say it's Pigeon Forge comes to Memphis when you go in there. It's a nice place to go visit and count the fish and all this stuff in the aquariums. Bill Street Landing opens. St. Jude expansion continues. Bass Pros open 15. Uh, an incumbent loses. That's rare. Strickland comes in. Black Lives Matter closes I-40. Uh, Big River Crossing opens on Harahan Bridge there. Confederate statues removed. Crosstown Concourse opens. That's huge. A $200 million urban vertical village. And then the renovation of the convention center begins in 2019. And that's all, no taxpayer money in that at all. No general fund taxpayer money. No property tax money in there at all. That's all from taxes collected from our visitors, okay? So be happy about that. Outside money paying for that. Don't let those politicians tell you anything else, okay? I'd say that's the number one image of, the, of the, uh, this big change, right? This big sea change in the way we perceive our history Confederate versus Black Lives Matter, let's say. I, I don't think we add to our history by subtracting. I think we add by adding. I understand the, the, the meanings behind some of this and the reasons and getting to MLK 50 and, and not having these uh, statues so prominently displayed in our city in prominent sections. And what was progressive 100 years ago is not progressive now, you know? So uh, it's just the way of our community. And uh, hopefully we'll do a better job of not making these an issue in our political race this year. We'll make education, drug, blight, crime, and litter our issues, our potholes, our police, our fire, those basic services, core services of government. That's what I want my politicians doing. Let the chamber and the edge make the deals for the big developments. Uh, let's let history kind of settle down here. We've done a lot. Uh, if you heard the talk about a century of black history in Memphis, I did. The things we're covering now in our heritage trail between Beale, South Main, Crump, and East, uh, uh, coming up there, I'm a Man Plaza, MLK Reflection Site, and now the Women's History Trail that you'll see, you heard the other day was being launched this year too. So there's two sides of our history there, women and black folks, that we hadn't covered very well over the last 150 years, and we're starting to do a real good job of that in places like the National Civil Rights Museum and Stacks. And some of these places do a really good job in covering these things. Probably the biggest thing during the, I think, in tw it was 2013, the public education merger, because now I feel like our public education system's more segregated than it was 50 years ago when you look at it, the population, the public schools, and then you got the six tiny towns. And you look at the, the population breakdown of that, you can make a case for that pretty easy. This boat came in, and we still get another boat in there. These boats right here, five of them now in this dock, have a $42 million annual economic impact. Again, that's all new money coming in uh, from people from Australia, New Zealand, Japan, East Coast, West Coast, America, and Europe. About 70% of them. St. Jude keeps on building and building and building. Over the Square is coming back. Midtown, you look at Cooper Young. It took about, you know, 27 years ago, there was uh, one restaurant in, in Cooper Young and 27 booths at the Cooper Young Festival. Now there's 27 restaurants and about 600 booths at the Cooper Young Festival. Broad Avenue's coming on, Crosstown Concourse. June West and a bunch of folks stood in, stood in front of tractors. That was going to be a grocery store there at Open Square. Memphis Heritage rallied there. And Bob Loeb came in. Uh, and look what's happened at Open Square and the rebirth there. You know, in 2011, uh, the top five buildings on a hit list were Sears Crosstown, uh, Tennessee Brewery, Hotel Chiska, Claiborne Temple, and 19th Century Club. And all five of those are occupied now, thanks to the efforts of Memphis Heritage and developers and lawyers and judges. <laughs> There's Crosstown Concourse. How many of y'all been to Crosstown Concourse? Isn't it amazing? 
And it's still growing. It's still changing every day. Something new. Even Luke's got exhibits in there, right? Didn't you say you got an exhibit? Soon. Soon. But just think, features like this. I know where the red stairs are. <laughs> Everybody knows where that is, don't you? Uh, with Church Health Center there, and gosh, even Temporal Israel has a satellite synagogue there or something like that, you know? Uh, eating places. And there's like, I got to take a tour, an architectural tour, where we went up in the residential areas, and there's about seven more smaller atriums up in there to bring light into that big building. You see how, how big that building is? Uh, and being warehouse space, you didn't need that extra light. But when you put people in there, you get extra light in there. Of course, there's 2017 statues coming down. Claiborne Temple coming up. Of course, every code enforcement rule has been broken to get Claiborne Temple open. But you got to look at the end game. And, and the times I had to fight with code enforcement, fire department on Mud Island and stuff, it just blew my mind. Um, okay, I'm okay with this happening and the wonderful things that are going on at Claiborne Temple from Rotary Club to Symphony to meaningful conferences and movies being shown there and other gatherings. It's amazing how that has become the heartbeat area of downtown, that and the plaza there at the National Civil Rights Museum. There's the Heritage Trail I was talking about. All these places are covered in there. Wonderful, the brochures right outside here. There are uh, wayfinders all through this whole project here. It's really well done. They're getting ready to expand on it again, as I understand. It takes you all the way down into Soulsville as well, too. I'm a man. What a great plaza this is. There's the names of the 1,100 sanit black sanitation workers on the wall there, uh, right by Claiborne Temple. The M.L. Clay Reflection Park. This was basically a skateboard ramp up by the convention center, <laughs> when you think about it, for 30 years until this got moved down to the MLK Reflection Park right on Martin Luther King Avenue. And there's uh, Ernest Withers photographs in here as well. So this explains all the parking there. It used to be just a parking lot in a uh, uh, little bank building there. Look at all the parks and streets. And okay, so Riverside Park became Dr. Martin Luther King Park. Uh, Astor Park became Tom Lee Park. Bill Street Marketplace became Handy Park. Uh, Robert Church Park expanded from the two acres to about 14 acres. Third Street became B.B. King Boulevard. Hernando became Rufus Thomas Boulevard. You see where I'm going here? Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Park, I'm a Man Plaza, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue, Bishop G.E. Patterson, that was Calhoun. This was Linden. This was uh, Auction. Uh, that became Willis Avenue. It's always been the A.W. Willis Bridge. That's why Willis got that name changed because you had Willis and Auction and Parkway. Too many names in five blocks there. Vasco A. Smith Administration Building, Clifford O. Davis, Judge Odell Horton Federal Building. Now he's the only white guy listening here and kind of curiously, he's KKK in the 1920s, so I don't know why his name's still on there, but didn't upset the politicians yet. Judge the Army Bailey Courthouse, uh, very instrumental in getting, when he wasn't a judge, a civil rights activist as well, getting the $144,000 together to save the Lorraine Motel on those courthouse steps, by the way, in 1982. And of course, now you got the Walter Bailey Criminal Justice Complex. Did what was Walter ever a visitor there? <laughs> I'm teasing. He's a friend of mine. Uh, but uh, we've done a lot in the last 20 to 30 years in, again, bringing names up, African American contributors to Memphis uh, and to our history in prominent locations all over our downtown area, when you think about it. Downtown museums today, there's over 20 downtown museums. The next one to open is going to be the Edge Motor Museum right there. Because that used to be Automobile Row all in that area before it went out to summer. Then uh, Mount Moriah, then Covenant Pike, then Wolf Chase. Uh, a lot of great museums in downtown Memphis. Over 11 million visitors a year now. Now we've got 25,000 residents living in downtown and 110 restaurants. Uh, nine thens and nows. So let's look at these thens and nows, okay? And I'm just going to go, I'll just go through them right here. Here's CNI Bank. Uh, AIA Design of the Decade. Y'all remember this bank? It was a terrarium, plants growing in there. This is a bank lobby right here. You can climb in a tree in a bank lobby in downtown Memphis. Uh, now it's the music, Visible Music College in there. They have dormitories next door. Ken Storch is doing a terrific job with the Visible Music College. The first time they came to Rock and Soul Museum in 2000, I thought we were going to have a bunch of blind kids coming. You know, and that was just Visible was the name of the school. We, we were prepared for a bunch of blind kids. They weren't blind. That's just me. How about Tom Lee Park is one of those uh, thens and nows. That's, that's Tom Lee Park. There's old John B. Edgar Point. It, it was a sinking Tom Lee Park. It got stabilized. Here with that rock dike and dredge field brought up. And that's that 20 acres we're fighting over right now between Memphis and May and Memphis River Park's partnership. There's Memphis and May in there. 
Barbecue and the Bill Street Music Festival. How about South Bluffs, 1970s? Okay, there's South Bluffs now. Here's South Bluffs in the 1930s, 1920s. Look at all these train lines right here. So if I back up, that, all that empty right there in the 70s was this. <laughs> all these train lines come to those warehouses. No airport yet, you see. No Presence Island. All the industry was up in here. That's harder to get. It almost looks like Tom Lee Parks are going to come, I think, with all these obstacles in it. It's just really hard to get up and down the mall with all those blocks in it like that. I mean, it's pretty and colorful. And uh, the, the Mid America Mall, President Ford dedicated in 76. There's a big fountain. I like that big fountain. But now the trolley goes through there, and they didn't want the trolley to go around it. So, engineering wise, they had to get rid of the fountain. There's the trolley, Main Street Trolley Mall at the clock tower. Tennessee Brewery, what a great project that has been. It sold out quicker than any other residential project in downtown there in the South Main area this last year. 100% uh, occupied. Here's some of the spaces, a big parking garage next to it. Interior spaces are cleared out. It's just going to be a beautiful place to live. And here's a view from up top there, panoramic view up and down the river. Uh, there's a pyramid, I-40, lower bridges. Scimitar building there right at 3rd. And Madison, or B.B. King in Madison, is now Hotel Napoleon. About 10 boutique hotels in, in development uh, right there. And there's the Pyramid Arena in 91. And there's Bass Pro now. Uh, gosh, what can I say about what's going on in there? Uh, Central Station then. Uh, and this is here. It got on the National Register of Historic Places. This is going to be a Wilson Hotel here. Uh, Hudson Hall will still be there, and the powerhouse just opened last week. Seven movie screens right here, right by the train station, and a restaurant. Big River Crossing, Harahan Bridge. This is a view from a, how many been out on, here, on Big River Crossing? Good. Uh, <coughs> hey, the name game. All our colleges changed names. How about that in the last 30 years? Okay. Population, again, we, here's a, here, our population growing through the century. We get up post-World War II. The only way we're growing here is through annexations. And then we have the out-migration and the white flight, and we start losing population in the 80s, 90s, 2000s. Uh, so the population mix, you can see during this time, up through the 1910, let's say, it was about 44% uh, black and... and uh, 50, 50 or 56 or so percent white, 47 black, 61. So 63% black now, 30% white, and 7% other, either Hispanic or Oriental. 29% of the 63% is poverty level or below. We have an extreme difference here in class as well as population mix. Here's Shelby County in 70. See, its growth for about 200,000, while Memphis has stayed pretty flat during that time. Outside of Memphis, see what has grown there. It's grown 30% inside Shelby County, outside the city limits. And then the tiny towns. This is an amazing thing right here, to where Millington was bigger than Lakeland, Germantown, Cayville, Barlett, and Arlington combined in 1970. Look where Millington is now. 67% uh, of the residential areas in Millington are rental. Think about that. If you didn't have Lowe's or Walmart there, they'd be in trouble as a city. Look how much Bartlett has grown from 1,100 to 54. It's over 60,000 now in the 2016 census. Tenth largest city in the state. Kyville grew big. Germantown, lit land, land maxed out right there. Arlington is now uh, more than Millington. Lakeland, which didn't even form until 1977, is bigger than Millington population-wise. Look at that. Look at, and then look at Oakland. Yay, I put Oakland in there. Highway 64, four lanes to Oakland, folks. See, if you build these highways like that, people will come. West Memphis has stayed stagnant. Marion has grown significantly in Crittenden County. And then look at Olive Branch, one of the fastest growing cities in the country, percentage-wise, let's say. So our, our exterior towns have grown hugely. Here's our counties during that time. Shelby County uh, has grown about 200,000, but Crittenden, flat, DeSoto County, 100 and what, 30,000? Boom. Uh, that's again, that's Whitehaven going to South Haven. And then Tunica actually lost 10% of its population after they opened up the casinos. No, they weren't going to, catfish, casinos, or cotton. Nobody's going to live there. <laughs> it's all farmers' lands, right? 
Nobody's going to live there. So everybody lived in DeSoto County to work there, you see. Uh, Fayette, pretty good growth. Tipton, real good growth. Millington went to Tipton just like Whitehaven went to South Haven. Our annexations, the big annexation, Frazier, of course, in 1958, but that starts, that leaps us over the Wolf River. Then all these other annexations get us outside uh, the Beltway, let's say, outside the uh, I-40 perimeter, and really taxes our city as far as infrastructure goes. So our sesquicentennial, I say we're still a tale of two cities right now at this point in time, 50 years later. One of the examples is the Mud Island flags. We can't fly these seven flags of jurisdiction because we don't like one flag. But we still fly the flag that had more slavery on it than any other flag in the history of our country, right there, oddly. Um, learn to tap dance, watch a vintage movie, research your family tree, admire the latest platforms, eat your lunch in the sunshine all downtown. That was 40 years ago. <laughs> Look what has happened in 40 years in downtown. Uh, and there's an old Jefferson Square. It burned uh, the same day the, uh, the press center closed. It burned on Halloween 1983. Uh, but a lot of great music came out of it. I think that's Sid Selvage right there. Uh, so today, not only are we are America's Distribution Center, and closing all these 12 days we've done these talks here, uh, river, railways, roadways, runways. Let me leave that with you. We're the number two inland port on the Mississippi River. We're one of three cities to have all five Class One freight rail operators in it. We're a big freight rail town getting bigger. We're I-40 and I-55 cross in West Memphis. That's the third largest center of trucking activity in America. And our airport is the number one cargo airport in America for the last 35 years and basically in the world. So that's our number one employer, transportation, distribution, logistics. We got to be thankful for that. Hospitals and healthcare is number two. Tourism's number three. I, I took a quote from Mark Gasol. Hey, that's me, by the way, in 1970. Look how felt I am and athletic and confident. <laughs> I'm not sad all this is over. I'm just happy that it happened. That's generally, I appreciate every one of y'all in this room and listening to me and what I've been able to do the last 40 years here. And I take that Mark Gasol approach to that right there. I'm happy. I'm lucky it happened to me the last 40 years here. And then... As Jack Buck would say at the end of his ball games, thanks for your time this time. Till next time, so long. Well, next time's going to be tomorrow <laughs> at the courthouse. And then in April, you've seen the other dates. Go to my website, jimmyogle.com, and find those May dates and uh, some July dates. Yeah, who said the all on that? Who said that? Oh, good. Carolyn, you did that. Boy, Carolyn, stand up, Carolyn, for a second here. That, oh, that's not Carolyn there? Oh, Jesse. Well, Jesse, I'm sorry. Here you go. Oh, you're from Ave Maria, Jesse. Okay. Luke, turn that light down on me. I got a little duck for you for saying all, okay? A little duck for you. <laughs> I get to, uh, I've made the rounds of Ave Maria, Kirby Pines, JCC, Brookdale, the village, Tresman Manor. I get to go to a lot of these places. There's your little duck pen right there. Oh, y'all are jealous, aren't you? There you go. Thank our sponsors. Thank the Peak Palace for doing all this. Thank Jess, John, Nancy, Katie, Luke, Willie, a Pink Slide Award winner now. Thank Vincent Astor, Phyllis Peterson, Erickson Group, University of Memphis Libraries, Communities and Conversation. I have to be on the radio at 1.30 today at KWAM. Then I got a historical commission meeting at 2.30. So I'm going to have to bolt on out of here, folks. Uh, but y'all stay. Go to Metro Eats. Collect brochures out there. Thank you for coming.